Let's continue our discussion today by starting with the brain. So here we'll start to look at brain and cranial nerves, which are some of these nerves coming off the surface of the brain. Now starting with the brain, remember it is part of the central nervous system. And only two things are found in that central nervous system, brain and spinal cord. Things have to be inside of those structures to be in the central nervous system. So when you look at some of these nerves we look at, like cranial nerves and spinal nerves, they are outside of those structures, so they're found in the peripheral nervous system. Everybody knows your brain is your primary control center of the body. Here's where more of homeostasis is maintained than any other structure that we have. It's often compared to a computer. It's estimated billions, maybe even trillions of calculations every second are made just to maintain homeostasis. And then, of course, there's all the other things like your conscious thought. Let's look at the major parts of the brain. We'll look at the brain stem, which has three parts to it, midbrain, pons, and medulla oblongata. This is the part of the brain that connects to the spinal cord, which, of course, connects all out to the rest of the body. Then we have the cerebellum, which looks like a small brain all to itself, way to the back, posterior. So it's involved with movement, balance, and posture. Deep towards the center of the brain, we'll see the diencephalon. It has a large region called the thalamus. And notice how these other regions give you an idea of where they're located. Subthalamus, epithalamus, and hypothalamus. And then lastly, there's the cerebral. This is the bulk of the brain by far. When you see brain, this is primarily what you see. Probably at least two thirds to three quarters of the brain will be cerebral. Conscious thought, control of skeletal muscles, and many things happen in this region right here. And then we're gonna take a look at some of these cranial nerves, <clears throat> these big nerves coming off the surface of the brain. Notice two of the pairs, there's 12 pairs all together. Two pair come off the cerebrum and 10 from the brain stem. So most of them are coming off that brain stem. But let's just take a look at a little cross-section of brain right here and just look at some of these major regions. Now notice first, this is the anterior front part of the brain here. Here's the posterior rear. So look at some of these structures we mentioned like the cerebellum. Again, this is what looks like a little small piece of brain all to its back. But then look at cerebrum right here. That is the bulk of the brain by far. Deep towards the center of the brain, we have the diencephalon with four different regions to it. And then again, down here at the bottom, inferior part of the brain, what connects it to the spinal cord is the brain stem. And again, the brain stem has three sections, midbrain, pons, medulla oblongata. We can see a few sections of the diencephalon, like this large thalamus region with this little inner thalamic adhesion, that connection there in the center. We'll have sub, hypo, and epithalamus we'll look at further along. And then across here is a region called the corpus callosum. It's a crossing over of axons from one hemisphere of the brain to the other. So let's look briefly at these primary divisions and we'll look at them a little bit closer further along. <clears throat> so let's start with the cerebrum, the biggest part of the brain. It has two hemispheres, a left and a right. Remember, we can still use left and right with all our other directional terms. In each hemisphere, there are four lobes. If you think about the names of those big flat bones of the skull, these are located in the same regions. So with the lobes, there's a frontal. Behind it's a parietal. To the back is an occipital. Then, of course, left and right on the sides are temporal lobes. There will also be sulci and gyri. Think of the sulci as any crack or depression you see on the surface of the brain along this cerebrum. And the gyri are the elevated folds. The cerebrum is very convoluted. It means it's very wavy and twisted. That increases surface area. The more surface area you have, more room for neurons you have, better off you are. You'll also see in the cerebrum, along with other structures of the body, a cortex and a medulla. Cortex is always an outer region. Medulla is always a deeper inner region. And when it comes to the brain, <clears throat> you'll see that the gray matter is superficial to the outside in the cortex. And remember that gray matter is where you find neuron cell bodies and dendrites. With the deeper medulla region, of the brain deeper to the insides where you find most of the white matter. That's the axons with the myelin around it. You'll see that those gray and white matter are reversed with the spinal cord, but this is how you'll find them with the brain. Also, you find lots and lots of nuclei scattered throughout the cerebrum, nuclear collections of neurons with particular functions, and there are many of them. And just looking at some of the functions of the cerebrum, conscious muscle movement, about it's just about all you have conscious control over in the body with just a few other exceptions. Memory, emotions, thought, conscious sensory perception, smell, hearing, sight, many, many functions associated with the cerebrum. 
Then again, there's that cerebellum, that small part of brain to the back. It also has two hemispheres, and it is connected partially to the brain stem. It's got two lobes. We'll see those little sections, little bumps or regions. There's a vermis, a little connection towards the center. Again, there's a cortex, an outer region, medulla, deeper inner region. And there's lots of folia, which are ridges. If you could run your fingers across the cerebellum, be sort of like uh, running your thumb across a set of stacked papers. Each one of those little ridges is a folia. And deeper to the inside of that cerebellum, you'll see the arbor vitae. It's a myelinated area. It looks like branches of a tree. We'll see that further in another picture. Functions, complex movements, fine coordination, a lot of balance and coordination associated with this cerebellum. Eye movements also controlled here. Then we get down to that brain stem. Remember, this is what's connecting the brain down to all other inferior parts of the body with that spinal cord and such. So again, with the brain stem going from superior to inferior, you got midbrain, pons, and medulla oblongata down at the bottom. Along the way, we'll see these little structures called pyramids. Here we have lots of descending motor tracks, lots of axons going down, and they cross over. <clears throat> That's what decusation is. And this partially explains why the left side of the brain controls the right side of the body and vice versa. You'll see these other little bumps called olives. We have a lot of balance and coordination located here. And the brain stem has got some very, very important critical functions. Heart rate and breathing are just a couple of those right there. And then lastly, number four, we got this dinencephalon, deep center region of the brain. The thalamus makes up the bulk of it, probably about two-thirds. Right below it, there's a subthalamus, and below that, a hypothalamus, and more towards the back, an epithalamus. Look at some of the functions here. Major sensory input center, big part of this dinencephalon. But you'll also see some motor function, mood, emotions, hunger, thirst, many things located in this region, a lot of them with that hypothalamus. So let's go back to that brain stem. Start at the bottom with the medulla oblongata. Again, this is what connects to the spinal cord. So there are many, many, many ascending and descending nerve tracts. Remember, nerves are bundles of axons. They're connecting different parts of the body with these neurons. There are many nuclei in the gray matter. <clears throat> Remember the gray matters where the neuron cell bodies, collections of neuron cell bodies working together are nuclei. Again, we mentioned some of the functions before. Heart rate's a huge one. Controlling the size, the diameter of your blood vessels, that's huge when it comes to diverting blood flow and changing blood pressure. Breathing, controlling the muscles of ventilation, swallowing, vomiting, hiccuping, coughing, sneezing, so many important functions here. And there again are the pyramids, places where you have axons crossing from one hemisphere of the brain to the opposite side of the body. Again, that's why the left side of your brain controls the right side of your body and just the opposite. There again are the olives, a lot to do with balance, coordination, and also modulation of sound. And notice a few of our cranial nerves, number 5 and then 9 through 12, all come off the medulla oblongata. Now just above it is the pons, <clears throat> so that's the center part of that brain stem just above that medulla oblongata there. Again, lots of nerve tracts, lots of axons, ascending and descending. You're going to see that everywhere throughout the brain stem. And looking at some of these nuclei, we got this pontine group, it's a little bit anterior. It's a good relay between that cerebrum and cerebellum. Very important there. We got some of the cranial nerves, five through nine found in this region right here. This is also somewhat of the sleep center of the brain. And also some of the respiratory centers here. Some of it's in the, or most of it's in the medulla oblongata, some of it here, but not exactly sure how it all works together. And then again, at the top of the brain stem is the midbrain. There's the most superior region. Notice it may also be called the mesencephalon. Again, there's a connection to it with the pons, which is just inferior to it. You got nuclei here. You got cranial nerves, three, four, and five, originating in this area right here. You got this tectum, where you got the couple of little mounds. And if you look at these little four mounds, they call the corpora quadrigemini, they're separated out. Two of them are called the superior colliculi. These are involved with visual reflexes. Say if a ball or something comes at your face very quickly, the muscles in your neck will contract to move your head out of the way, prevent you from being damaged. That's a good reflex to have. They receive information from the inferior colliculi, eyes, skin, so on. It's like somebody also with the skin, somebody touches you on the shoulder from behind, you instinctively turn and look in that direction. But there's also the inferior colliculi involved with hearing reflexes. There's a very loud noise around you. You tend to jump and move away from it. 
It's another little protective survival reflex there. There are the red nuclei. These aid in conscious regulation and coordination of motor activities. There's the substantia nigra area where you got some melanin, so it's a little bit darker. This is interconnected with the basal nuclei of the cerebrum. A lot of muscle tone and coordination here. You've also got this region called the tegmentum. Lots of ascending tracts. In other words, coming up. You see spinal and medial lemniscus, bundle of axons in this region, coming up from the spinal cord to the brain. And there's also lots of descending tracts. Some of these from the cerebrum, going down through brain stem to the spinal cord. And there's also this reticular formation, group of nuclei scattered all around the brain stem, which have a lot to do with your sleep-wake cycles.